What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the HQ. Welcome back to the channel. I am joined, as always, on this beautiful Thursday with Dr. Jesse Morse of the Fantasy Doctors. This is Big Dogs Gotta Eat Fantasy Football. Every Thursday, we're going to be breaking down all of the key injuries that y'all need to know for 2019 fantasy football. We are into week three, which means there are a lot of injuries to cover today. This past weekend was obviously a big quarterback injury-centric weekend. Um, we're not really going to dive too much into those guys because we know they're out for an extended period of time. With these episodes, we're really trying to get into the nitty-gritty of guys that you're probably going to need to decide upon this weekend in your lineups. First guy I can think of up on this list is quarterback Cam Newton. So, first of all, welcome back to the channel, of course, Dr. Morse. Um, oh, thank you. A pleasure. Love the hat. Love the new swag you guys got. Some, oh, yeah. we just uh, I just released them. I uh, had to have them printed, trying to represent a little bit. Yeah, it looks good. So we have uh, Killer Cam. Killer Cam. Unfortunately, doesn't look like himself. He was just completely off the mark. He missed, uh, what was it, that fourth and one? And he, and he threw like a deep fade that he was falling back and trying to avoid like, God, that was awful. Yeah, I don't know what he's doing. So, I mean, here, and I'm not surprised by this, but he and, and we warned everybody about this about a month ago, three weeks ago, when they said, yeah. all right, I know they're going to play him in week one versus Aaron Donald, but be careful if he re-injures his foot. Well, it took another week to re-injure his foot, but he did. And now we're talking about a re-injured mid-foot sprain, and Will Greer is not the backup. Go figure. Oh, Alan. But they have Allen, you know, uh, doing it. Uh, predominantly because I guess he wasn't ready for the he, he wasn't ready for the, the time. I mean, I don't maybe you know details, but either way, um, I, I'm quite concerned about Cam. I think he's going to take at least one to two weeks to even get comfortable. The problem is if they keep rushing him back, he's never going to be 100 percent, and he's going to continue to look like garbage. Yeah. I mean, Samuel has tons of upside. Hell, even uh, their tight end looks half decent uh, until he gets injured. But, but he looks, CMC, he looks like a. I mean, the stats are good, but he's, he looks like he's a ninety-year-old man running out there on the field. I actually oh, don't I know. Well, is it Greg Olson or fucking Cam Newton at this point? Right now, I just I don't think he's going to play this week. I really don't. Yeah, he shouldn't. I mean, he definitely shouldn't. But I don't think he's gonna. I'd be surprised if he did too. I think at this point, just based on how he's played, like the the legs were what we wanted him for in fantasy. He's definitely droppable in one quarterback leagues, in my opinion. Um, maybe if you're like a 14 team league or deeper, I'd hold on to him. But otherwise, you know, you're, you're free to hit the waiver wire. His backup Kyle Allen is the guy that needs to be on your radar. If you're in a super flex league, he filled in last year for one week um, for when Cam was gone. He got the dub against New Orleans, 33 to 14. He threw up 228 passing yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions, rushed the ball for 20 yards and a touchdown. Um, he was highly targeting Christian McCaffrey. So C-Mac, don't worry about C-Mac. If Cam is out, he's going to get a ton of targets. So Cam, definitely a concern here with the foot. If he comes back too early, we'll probably re-injure it again. This could be a completely lost season for Cam at this point, but we'll have to see. Um, so bad news for Cam. Let's talk about running backs. There's a lot of running backs that um, hit the injury list this week. Most concerning would probably be James Conner because he was basically a first-round pick for a lot of people. Now, something to do with his knee. He is coming out and saying it's not serious, that he is definitely going to be ready to go for Sunday's game. Um, he did not practice at all. We're filming this on Wednesday. He did not practice on Wednesday. He does not expect to practice too much this week, um, but he does expect this to be uh, you know, a non-issue for when the game day comes. Do you see this being a, a situation? <laughs> it's a very cute dog in the background over there. He wants in. He wants his clout as well. Do you see this being a situation similar to Joe Mixon? where he's clearly a little bit less than 100%, but he kind of punishes himself and, you know, the snaps are a little bit lower, whatever. Definitely. I mean, I feel like – I feel like uh, Connor – so Connor suffered what they're calling a left knee hyperextension. So okay. basically his knee, instead of being like this, kind of – and that has the tendency to stretch the ligaments. The lucky news is that he did not suffer any major ligament tears, uh, which obviously would have been a big deal. Um, the, 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 so that's the good news. The bad news is he's going to take a couple of weeks to get back to hundred okay. percent. I wouldn't be surprised if he tries to play this week. I don't know how effective he's going to be. Uh, we saw how feisty the, the Niners looked the past couple of weeks. So, uh, I mean, remember you have Mason Rudolph, uh, you know, in the backfield now too. So this is going to be a, a, a completely different offense. I have Connor in one league. 
I may put him in my flex if I don't have any better options, but uh, I'm just not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not happy about, good it. about it. Yeah. I, I say that, uh, I actually think we brought this up last week. I don't remember if we did or not, but it, I had kept Jalen Samuels on one of my rosters because I had a feeling James Conner was going to get a big workload. And I was like, ah, should I drop him or keep him or whatever? I kept Jalen Samuels. Luckily, if he's available on your wire, I would absolutely go grab Jalen Samuels. Cause again, if, if Connor pushes it, something might happen to the knee. He's going to, take a couple of weeks to get back 100%, maybe he gets a bigger workload. We'll see what happens. But Jalen Samuels is absolutely a guy you need to have on your radar given his size, his speed, the success that he saw last year as the Steelers workhorse when James Conner was out. So Conner is definitely someone that you need to downgrade a little bit for this week because, like Doc said, he won't be 100% for a couple of weeks. Now, the Kansas City running back situation, it hasn't been very pretty for fantasy up to this point, and it gets uglier. We have Sean McCoy dealing with an ankle injury. We have Damian Williams dealing with a knee injury. Neither of them practiced today. I believe – I mean, I haven't heard much about Damian Williams' knee, um, so it doesn't really sound like it's great. The Sean McCoy's ankle seems like it's a little less serious than, uh, than the Damian Williams' knee problem right now. Um, and he says he, he, you know, he was going to try to practice today, I believe, and then end up not practicing. So uh, yeah. it's, kind of, it's, a, it's a messed up situation. What can you tell us about that right now and how are you feeling? First of all, I, I think it's officially Darwin Thompson's season. Uh-oh. Yikes. Um, and that's not a testament really to the, the injuries to Williams and McCoy. It's just to the talent of Darwin. You like Darwin. Uh, I do like Darwin. Uh, I think he is – I think it's, it's go time. Um, McCoy is banged up with an ankle. We don't have any details. Good news is MRI was negative, which means there's no major fractures or, or ligamentous tears. But like, like uh, you know, Mixon that was, that was dealing with it uh, last week and, 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 and basically will be still dealing with it this week, he's not going to be 100%. Williams, on the other hand, has a, a knee injury. He's never really ever had a big workload in the NFL. And, and if he's banged up and this thing flares up or, or just he can't get it right, then we're talking about the other Williams, Darrell, and, and Darwin. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they uh, either inactivated one of the two that is injured or they activated all four. I mean, this is going to be a great game this yeah, Sunday. I mean, uh, they're playing, yeah, you know, playing, they're playing the Ravens, right? It should be one of the best games of the year. It's like a 55-point over-under. So you're like, this is a smash spot for whoever the Chiefs you know, running back is. Now, like, are you con- – I know you like Darwin Thompson, but you're, I, like, you're not confident throwing any four of these running backs into your lineup, right? Not – ah. Uh, right now it's Wednesday for for us right now. Right. Uh, neither practiced. Uh, they said they were gonna, but they didn't. They maybe did a little bit of a walkthrough. If Friday one of them does like a full practice, I'll feel better. Yeah. But as of right now, I don't. I think I would avoid the entire backfield yeah. because you may get a little bit of this, you may get a little bit of that, and no one actually does anything. But I feel like this is like a GPP flex spot, smash spot. Just just. So like last week with 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 Robinson, who was like, "What just happened?" Yeah, I thought I thought Hardman was on, and and, uh, and, and then all of a sudden, it should have um, been. I mean, he almost had a monster game too. I mean, they both did, but 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 obviously one kind of surprisingly took over the other. And we really didn't think see it coming. Yeah. So I mean, that's kind of the way I feel. They they're gonna need they need they can't throw the ball a million times. Like they have to run it a little bit. Yeah. at least to set up the pass or whatnot. So I, mean, I don't even know if they do, to be honest. They didn't need it last week. And, and one of the things – so they just lost uh, left guard or left tackle Fisher, Eric Fisher, yeah. for six weeks. I don't I mean, think anything matters on Casey's offense. <laughs> <laughs> all, just there. Like, all right. I, I mean, uh, maybe that doesn't matter. But all I know is that he's had sports hernia surgery, and we're going to talk about that again in a minute. But um, that's usually – at fastest four weeks, but usually closer to six. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I'm, I'm feeling the same way. I'm not throwing any KC running back into my lineup. Um, you know, I talked about on my waiver wire video article, if you wanted to grab Darwin Thompson, I thought he was a good pickup this week. I'm not probably as optimistic as you are on Thompson, because I think this is just going to end up being a committee and we're never going to see like a full workload from any of them, which is kind of unfortunate given the you know, circumstances of being a chief running back in, in this offense. But, you know, you mentioned Damian Williams as a guy who we've never seen get a full workload. That was my concern with Josh Jacobs coming into this season, right? He's a, he's mm-hmm. a very talented back, obviously. He was at Alabama, but he never received a full workhorse workload. And now he's thrown into a situation in Oakland where they're giving him 25 carries, 25 carries right off the rip. 
And my concern was that we've never seen him do it before. So why, if, he, if he's never done it in college, why all of a sudden do we assume that he's going to be able to do it in the NFL? I don't know if the scoring injury has anything to do with that, but here we are with Josh Jacobs and a groin injury. And yep. he did practice today in a limited fashion. So your thoughts on Josh Jacobs right now with this whole groin thing? Love the talent. Can't trust him with a groin. Okay. Groin's a notorious – okay, so I'll give you – uh, a perfect reason why. Look what happened to Deshaun Jackson last week at the beginning of the Sunday night game. Both him and Alshon suffered soft tissue injuries at the beginning of the game, and they were done for the game. Yep. These Jacobs is coming into the game with a groin injury. If ever he tries to uh, tear it up or you know cu- push it hard, he's gonna re-aggravate it. That's just the nature of this injury. There's no way that three or four days of rehab and rest, and relative rest, is not, I mean, he's not really resting, yeah. is, is going to be enough to allow him to be 100%. Yeah, and he's a guy so, that runs really hard and at 100% on every single run that he goes out there, right? So he's looking to hit guys. He's looking to put his foot into the ground and run as hard as he can, which is obviously cause for a little bit extra concern when you're dealing with this, this groin. Yeah, I mean, and, and part of the problem is part of the problem is crazy Gruden wants to give him thirty touches a game, yeah. which is I love that as a fantasy owner, but I hate that as a guy who's you know he has a groin injury. I'm like ah, yeah. I can't, he can't handle that. He, I mean, and and that's part of the the the, the initial volume issue. That's why Camara has never gotten a crazy workload because they felt like if they scaled back his workload and just made him you know potent he would be effective and he has been, I mean, he's been a top five back despite really not getting 200 plus carries a year. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that was always my concern. That is my concern now. So for people out there that have Jacobs, you know, is it one of those guys where you're like, you'll throw them into your flex if you don't have any other options or you're just not throwing them out there? No, I mean, I can't trust him right now. I mean, last week, he went 99 yards on like nine carries. I think he got, or maybe 12 carries. And then he was ghost. He didn't. He wasn't anywhere the rest of the game. I don't know if it was play script calling, if it was injury. Like what? I just I can't trust them. And 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 their other major offensive weapon, Williams, is injured also. So it's like I I can't trust them. Um, it starts to get a little thin when half of your running backs are banged up. So you may have to pick. But right now, I don't feel very good about it. Yeah. Um, so let's let's transfer over to those Philadelphia Eagles wide receivers that you were just talking about. We have Deshaun Jackson and Alshon Jeffrey both missed Sunday night football, which kind of cleared the way for JJ Artega Whiteside as well as Matt Collins to come in and get, you know, starter snaps, 90% of the snaps. Now D Jax is dealing with a groin, Alshon Jeffrey dealing with a calf strain. Both of these guys are gonna miss week three, um, if not into week four. Like what what do you think their realistic timetable return is? I mean, at this point it's like Man, it's tough. It's tough to hold on to players because there's so many guys on the wire that you want to grab. Yeah, I don't. I don't think like. I mean, the timetable doesn't seem too long, so it's probably guys I'm going to still hold on to. What is your take on on their realistic timetable returns? So Jeffrey has had three major injuries in the past 18 months. He came back from rotator cuff surgery last year. He looked pretty good. He did a very good year. He had a biceps injury a couple of weeks ago. And now he's got a calf. He had a what kind of injury a couple of weeks ago? Biceps. He had a bicep uh, contusion. I guess somebody ran into his biceps and, and he just he was he was hurting. It didn't really affect him, but I mean he's had he's been banged up. Now he's got a calf injury. As we know with Derrick Henry, as we know with Andrew Luck, uh, these don't heal quickly. Uh, Dallas Godert, his uh, teammate, also too. dealing with this. Um, that and, to get twenty targets. Yeah, these don't heal quickly. That's the problem. Is like. You 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 want you want to rush him, but I had a guy in my office Monday two days ago. This guy had a grade one calf strain. I ultrasounded him. I looked at the muscle architecture. He could barely walk. He was using a cane. He was like forty. Grade like he one. Wasn't grade one's the least serious one. Oh, I mean these hurt. Yeah, these really because yeah. the issue with the gastroc, which is the muscle that he strained, is yeah. that that's your propulsion muscle. That's what you need for speed. So you can't push off. That's what a wide receiver does. Yeah. Alshon is quickly going down that, like, Dez end of career path. He's getting there where, you know, these injuries are starting to add up. When you're older, it's hard to come back from them. Now, Deshaun Jackson, he's dealing with a groin. Obviously, he's going to need some time to rest and recover. 
he's a guy I want to have on my lineup because Carson Wentz is just throwing so many deep balls to him. Mm-hmm. How long are you hoping they let him rest for? Depend, like you know, based on the severity of anything you've heard about D. Jackson the groin. We've they've actually told us a lot more than they usually do, which is nice. Okay. If it was up to me, based on what we know, he's dealing with a sports hernia groin uh, injury. That is a tearing of the lower abdomen where it meets the upper groin, kind of like your, uh, uh, just kind of that the crevice area. That's where basically where it is. That sounds really bad. You know, it, it's very uncomfortable, especially for running and twisting, which is a lot of the, what these guys do. The issue with these is they don't heal well with rehab. They don't – we've tried. We, there's nothing that they can do in rehab to make it feel comfortable. This is what Trey Burton has been dealing with. It's a very common injury. And, and the problem is – hey, settle down. Uh, the problem is he needs surgery. He, but but, but surgery is going to put him back six, four, maybe five, likely closer to six weeks. He doesn't want to miss that much time. So he's going to try to push through it. But I wouldn't be surprised if he misses week three, misses week four, and then he's probably going to be mediocre-ish at best. This would be my recommendation is to sell high. As much as I like him in this offense, we may that this may be week one and then all downhill. Damn. All right. Well, you heard it here first. Then D. Jax is a guy who, you know, along with Cam, high hopes in the beginning of the season, but it might end up being a lost season just because of the negative effects that we saw so early on. Now, I want to jump right back to the running backs. We had one more guy that we kind of missed out on. That was Devin Singletary. It, you know, I, I hadn't actually watched the injury happen. I didn't even watch this game. I but saw I, you did. Okay. So, it was, supposedly it was a non-contact injury, I believe. So, it sounded Yeah, he was just running and he kind of pulled up. And, okay, okay. I, I thought it was one of those. His, like this butt kind of where – his, basically his proximal, his hamstring. The good news, they said it was mild – uh, and I think he's practicing uh, in 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 li- limited fashion. I don't. I can't. I ha- can't confirm that. Shout I don't, out to, I don't uh, think he did. to his alma mater, which is my alma mater. Yeah, let's go. I like the kid as a runner. He's he's look, looking good in limited fashion. But there's there's no way they let him play this week because if he plays this week, he's going to only make this worse. Like Leonard Fournette last year, who was basically. I mean, he would he would come back, and then all of a sudden he made a grade one into a severe grade two, and he was out like four to five, six more weeks. So. They have to be smart with this. Don't don't mess with this and let them rest for a good two weeks. Slide TJ Yeldon in and just rock with it. Yeah, that also makes Frank Gore, uh, you know, this is one of those injury optimism ones where, you know, you hear a report and he says, oh, he's day-to-day. So people say day-to-day on a Tuesday. That means that's five days later. He's definitely going to be playing. If he's day-to-day now, he'll be fine. But that also opens up, you know, Frank Gore got 20 carries last game plus two. Yeah. So Frank Gore slides in, you know, he's obviously not exciting, but he's in a situation right now where he's in a bit better situation than he's been in the last few years. And he, he could actually capitalize on and being in your flex spot, right? Because Josh Allen, believe it or not, is actually going to give him. Oh, yeah. I mean, they, they want to run the ball. They, yeah. they want to they run the ball. This is what they do. I mean, you saw Josh Allen had, get a rushing touchdown last week. You saw them looking for Beasley. You saw them looking for John Brown. They want to run the ball, but they will pick their spots. Yep. If you look at Josh Allen's schedule coming up, they have some awesome matchups. I mean, there's Josh yeah. Allen is on the wire. Go pick him up. And overall, I really like I really like this uh, th- this sneaky kind of offensive potential. Give Singletary a couple weeks. A Gore maybe this week. Maybe Yeldon in, in a really deep league. But but rock and roll for the next couple of weeks with your bye weeks because they would they start and. Uh, basically next week. Yeah, I mean, they're six-point favorites against Cincinnati this week at home. We saw Cincinnati get absolutely thrashed by the 49ers backfield, let up over 300 yards in scrimmage to their yeah. running backs. So it's like Frank Gore, I, he's, as, you're not going to find 15 to 20 touches on the waiver wire like you will with Frank Gore. So yeah. um, he breaks, you know, one big play or gets into the end zone, and he gives you value there. So if you're a Singletary owner, do not take this injury lightly. Make sure that you have a backup plan in place despite them saying day-to-day. Now, someone who's not day-to-day is Michael Gallup. He is dealing with this meniscus injury, and I believe they have to trim something, so there is some kind of surgery involved. They're giving him a time frame of two to four weeks. Um, is, are one of, those, one of those numbers more probably realistic than the other one? This is the same pretty much exact injury that DK Metcalf had. Okay. So, and he came back in three weeks, maybe? Two, I mean, two, but he was like, 
yeah. basically two between two and three. So it is possible. It is realistic. He, uh, Gallup, I, I really liked Gallup this season. I got yeah, him in a couple leagues. A year. I'm disappointed with this. I think Devin Smith slides in. But I think by week five, maybe six, yeah. Uh, depending on when their buy is, they'll be back. He'll be back. He'll be ready to rock and roll like nothing ever changed. Not okay. overly concerning in the short term. Long term, we won't worry about that. But short term, this is uh, this is uh, a little hiccup. That's it. Yeah. Their their buy is not till I think like if I'm reading this correctly, like week week eight or nine. So he should be back before then. Good to hear though that this is not something that should probably linger because we saw DK Metcalf kind of come back straight into form. You know, full explosion and everything. So, yeah, he looks good. I mean, I'm impressed. A couple of rookies have impressed so far. Oh, yeah, this has been a huge explosion year for the wide receiver rookie class. I mean, something that we've been waiting for for a few years now. I mean, I like last year's, obviously, but this year looks like a statistical anomaly almost at this point. So uh, hold on to Gallup if you have him. Obviously, he was kind of in the midst of a breakout year with this Dak and Dallas offense, and I'm sure he'll slide right back into that number two role when he gets back in a few weeks. Tyrell Williams is dealing with a hip pointer. So realistically, this Raiders offense is relying on Josh Jacobs, Tyrell Williams, Darren Waller. You have Jacobs dealing with the groin. You have Tyrell Williams with the hip pointer. Now, someone else was dealing with the hip pointer in the preseason. I think that was OBJ. But he had a few weeks to really rest and recover and play in the preseason. Um, I believe Tyrell was limited at practice today. What do you think his chances are of actually suiting up this Sunday, given what we know? 50-50. Hip pointers have. aren't overly concerning. They're just kind of painful. It's basically a bruise to, like, the back part of your hip, kind of where your butt and your hip meet on the top. Realistically, uh, one week you're feeling better, three weeks they're pretty much back to normal. You okay. saw OBJ go bananas the other night on a stupid formation that the defense shouldn't be running. Yeah. But, I mean, he was go time. It was go time. So, a couple of weeks, he'll be fine. Be careful with him this week. Limit your expectations. But in, in the next two to three weeks, no concerns. Okay, cool. Good to know. So, no concerns for Tyrell. No concerns for Gallup. We do have concerns for the Philadelphia Eagles wide receivers. I think those are all the injuries we had on the list today. Real quickly, though, we just got word that David Njoku, along with the concussion that he suffered – I'm on net football, injured his wrist and may have to undergo um, surgery on it and could be out for an extended period of time. Now, I'm not going to, like, put the doc on the uh, on the spot here because we don't really know the details of it or anything. Doku getting additional medical opinions to find out if surgery is necessary and how long would be sidelined. The only thing that I would like to point out is that his backup, Demetrius Harris, is a guy that they signed this offseason from the Chiefs. This guy is 6'7", 235 pounds, runs a 4'5", 7", 40-yard dash. He's in like the 90-whatever percentile for speed score based on his size. He is someone that you saw. He came in and got targets from Baker Mayfield immediately on Monday Night Football once the joke went out. So if you're in a dynasty league, if you're desperate at tight end, I'm literally probably going to go pick up Demetrius Harris in one of the leagues that I was uh, using Hunter Henry in. So Demetrius Harris, by the time you guys watch this, your waivers will probably have already gone this morning. But if he's available, Demetrius Harris, deeper leagues, tight end premium leagues, dynasty leagues, Go scoop him up off the wire because David Joker's wrist injury could be serious. Um, I don't know. Yeah, if I mean, a concussion is a minimum of seven days, pretty much, uh, maximum of 10. You So that's going to be, quote, unquote, fine by week four. But this wrist, at, a, at best, is a four-week. Best case scenario is four weeks. So that's at minimum week six, week seven, more like week seven. If this is complicated, if they decide to put plates or screws or uh, have to fix it, you're looking at at least week seven, maybe closer to week eight or nine. It, it really depends on what exactly what happened in his wrist, if it's complicated or if it's simple. Right. We'll, uh, we'll retouch on this point once we know a little bit more. And again, they do a great job over at the Fantasy Doctors covering everything injury related. As soon as it happens, you can follow Dr. Morse on Twitter at Dr. Jesse Morse. Um, they also do, you know, if you want to support us as content creators, the best way to do that is to hit us up on Patreon. Now, the Fantasy Doctors have their Patreon open where you will get uh, Dr. Morris. Why don't you fill them in on, on the exclusive that they get over Yeah, there. so you've got a couple different levels of stuff. Like, I, as much as I like cr to create content, and don't get me wrong, I do. It pretty much consumes my life when I'm not working or at the gym. I hear that. I have my subscribers that I want to keep happy, right? Because I, I'm creating good content, but I can't keep giving away all these other videos where the subscribers are like, well, what am I paying for then? So I've made all of my personalized injury videos uh, for all of the fantasy doctors on our paywall. It's $5 a month. Well, we spend it. that on a coffee or a half of a coffee nowadays. 
like we play DraftKings and FanDuel and all this other stuff. Like we're just throwing money out, but you don't want to pay $5 for quality injury content that may give you an upper hand and win you a lot of money. I'll, I'll let you kind of uh, think about that, but I try to provide the best we can with most updated. We will provide accurate content like this with, with Nick and with some of the other stuff that I'm on. But if you want one-on-one -on -one analysis for one player, it's, go it's, it's going to our Patreon site. Yeah, I mean, you see, you guys have been, you know, watching my channel throughout the entire summer. You've seen Dr. Morris on here busting his ass and putting together quality content for us. So, again, that is the way that you go support them and get more quality content because we're going to cover, you know, the bigger fantasy name, but there are plenty of other players that we're not going to get around to all the time, and they will be very much in-depth on their Patreon page as well as obviously on their social stuff which will all be linked down below. They have their own YouTube channel, their Twitter handles and whatnot. So thank you again for joining us uh, for week three's injury discussion. And we will be back next Thursday, week four. As always, good luck this week and uh, stay healthy.